this video, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the common functions that are listed on the Home tab. So here's the Home tab up here. This is what comes up by default when you go into Excel. And over here in the Editing group, we've got this uh, little button here called Auto Sum. And if you click on the down arrow, you see it has one, two, three, four, five functions that are available here. Excel has hundreds of functions. Let me hit Escape there. You need to select that. Excel has hundreds of built-in functions. These five are on the only ones, though, that are on the Home tab, and these are probably five of the most common ones, which is why they're on the Home tab. So uh, we'll take a look at those in just a second here. So what I want to do for each month, I've got this real simple budget here, three months, three categories, and I want to do some computations over here. So I want to find the total of these uh, expenses for January. And the hard way to do it is type equals uh, B2 plus B3 plus B4 and hit enter, and I get 1,030. And if you only got three numbers, it's not a big deal. But if you had a column of you know 10 or 20 or 100 numbers, uh, you probably wouldn't want to put in a formula that long. So Excel has a simple way of doing this because adding a column of numbers is something that, that happens so often. So put the cursor at the bottom where you want the total to go and then just go to your home tab and go to the editing group over here click on auto sum and we want sum and it will come up with the sum function assumption uh, function is just a built-in formula and it gives us the name of the function sum and in parentheses we have what's called an argument list which is the numbers that the function uses to compute the answer and our argument list in this case is B2 colon B4 and the colon means everything in between and just to make it a little bit easier for you Excel draws a dancing line around the arguments so you can visually verify that you really are adding the correct numbers uh, sometimes Excel guesses correctly what you're trying to add up and sometimes it doesn't but in this case it's a, a guessing correctly so go ahead and hit the enter key and we get the same number we got before but it was a little bit easier okay now uh, if I double click on this formula, what you see here is you see B2 to B4, and that's what it's supposed to add up. And the way that it is actually stored internally inside of Excel is it's not really B2 to B4. What it is is B2 is three cells above the cell that the formula is in. So it's saying go up three cells and for the first number and go up one cell. B4 is one cell above for the second number and add everything in between those two numbers including both of them. So this is actually relative to where it is on the spreadsheet, where the formula is on the spreadsheet. Okay. So and let me show you here. This is, I'm going to do a copy. I'm going to right click on this and do a copy. I'm copying that formula. Now I'm going to find just a random place over here and do a control V to paste it in. Okay. Now if I click on this formula and you look up here on the formula bar, it says J11 to J13. It has nothing to do with B2. Let me hit escape for a second here and get rid of this dancing line. Okay. It has nothing to do with column B. It has to do with column J. And if I double click on this, I see it is the three cells that are right above. Okay. So the formula is this relative to the cell that the formula is in. I'm going to copy this again. This time I'm going to do the keyboard shortcut Control C. And I'm just going to pick another place down here and do a control V and paste it in. And you see now it's doing three cells above in column D. I'm in 17. If I double click, it gives me 14 through 16. And that's exactly what you want to do most of the time. So this is called a, these are called relative cell references because they are relative to the uh, cell that the formula is in. And now again, I'm going to hit escape here to get rid of the dancing line. And then I'm going to click on this and hit delete, not backspace, and click on this one and hit delete, and now they're gone. So if I take this formula and I copy it just across to the next two columns, instead of copying it some random place over here, uh, it does exactly what you would expect it to do. When I copy it to column C and, and row 5, it gives me the three cells that are right above. That's what I want. If I look at what's in column D, row 5, and double click, it gives me the three cells right above, which is exactly what I want. Okay, So relative cell references, the terms in the formula are relative to the cell that the formula is in. And if you copy it, they will change accordingly. Now let me show you one other way uh, to do this. 
Uh, I'm going to select all those and hit the delete key to get rid of them. And instead of selecting one cell this time before I start, I'm going to select all of them. And then I'm going to go up here. And you don't really need to click on the down arrow and choose sum because you see auto sum is the default. So just click on auto sum here. And it will sum. And you know, if you're never sure about what it's doing, uh, you can always double click and verify that the formula is correct. Okay. Now, column E here is supposed to give me some totals for each row, and I can use that shortcut again, select all of the cells, and go up here and click on Auto Sum, and it automatically sums each row. Again, if you're not sure that it's really doing the right thing, double click on it, and it says D2 to, I'm sorry, B2 to D2, which is these three cells, and that's exactly what you want. And if I hit Escape, and I missed the Escape key, I hit the Help key instead. Let's close that. Okay, so if I hit escape here, it will take me out of editing mode. And then I'm going to double click on the next one just to kind of make sure. And that's right, and the others are probably right as well, but I'm just going to double click on them just to make sure. Never hurts to double check. Okay. Now, in column F, I want to find out what the most was that I spent on food and rent and miscellaneous. And that is asking for the maximum value for these three cells right here. Notice, i got to make sure I don't include column E because that's always going to be the maximum because it's the sum of those three. So let's go to column F, row 2, where we want to start. And let's go up here and let's ask for the maximum function. And this is one of those places where Excel guesses incorrectly. It guesses all of the numbers that are next to it, but I don't want to include B. I'm sorry, I don't want to include E. I want B2 to D2. And this is really, really easy to fix. You just take your mouse and drag it over the cells that you want. And the dancing line, so click and drag. And the dancing line is now around B2 to D2 which is what I want, and if I hit enter, it will give me the largest amount that I spent on food during that three month period. And because these are relative cell references, if I copy it down, it will give me the highest value. This is obviously 500 because they're all 500. Down here, the biggest one is 275. If I double click on it just to make sure it's maxing the right things, it is, and that takes care of column F. Now let's go to column G, I want the lowest value. And the lowest value is going to be the min function, short for minimum. And again, it tries all of the numbers. I don't want all the numbers. I just want these three. So take the mouse and drag it over them. And you see that the formula changes accordingly. It now says the minimum from B2 to D2. Hit Enter. Click on that cell. Get your fill handle. Drag it all the way down. And it gives us the minimum. Let's go to column H. I want to find the average for each category. Let's go up here to Auto Sum, click on Average, and this gets a little worse every time because it wants all of the numbers that are next to the cell. Uh, we just want the first three. Uh, when it says B2 to D2 and the dancing line is around B2 to D2, go ahead and hit the Enter key, and then go back up here and click and get your fill handle and drag it down, and that's what we get. The last column, column I, is to compute, is to count how many numbers I have. Now, the only real value this has in this particular instance is uh, it would tell me if I had a missing number. So count counts the number of cells that have numbers in them. So let's put the cursor in I2 here. Let's go to Auto Sum and click on Count Numbers. The name of the function is actually just plain old count. And again, it wants all the numbers there. I just want these three and select those three and when your formula says uh, B2 to D2 go ahead and hit enter and it tells me I got three numbers and if I get this and get my fill handle and drag it all the way down I should get threes for everyone. Um, this is not a very big deal in a spreadsheet this small but in a large spreadsheet you might want to make sure that no numbers were missing and so for example if I had a number missing here I'm just going to go and hit the delete key on C3. Uh, now I've got a two over here and so that tells me that a number was missing someplace here in the rent. So I'm going to do a control Z to undo that and it puts the 500 back and my count ends up okay over here. 
and that is how the basic um, mathematical or arithmetic functions that are on uh, the home uh, tab work in Excel 2016.